Hi everybody, Miss Rachel from the Farmingdale Public Library here, and today I'm going to show you how to upcycle a glass jar into a really pretty vase. This would make an excellent gift for a holiday, like say Mother's Day is coming up soon, or you can use it just because. You can also use this vase as a candle holder, provided that your paint is already totally dry and you're not using flammable alcohol-based paints. Okay, so for this activity, you're going to need a glass jar. Any glass jar is fine. Um, you could use an old washed out spaghetti sauce jar, a mason jar like this one, a jelly jar that you've washed out. As long as it's clean, you can use any kind of glass jar that you'd like. And if it has a lid like one of these mason jars here, what you are going to want to do is ask a grown-up to help separate the lid from the gasket um, because this side is sharp and we're not really going to be using that for a vase. If you want afterwards you can put this back on and have it be a nice top. Okay so for this activity we're going to need some paint brushes like I have here in this can, a cup of water to wash out our paints with, this is my paint cup here, and some acrylic paints. I'm going to be using an easel today and the colors that I'm going to be using are white, blue, green, red, oh there it goes, and uh, yellow. There we go, and yellow. But you can use any colors that you'd like. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a big paintbrush, flip my jar upside down, actually flip it upside down on my hand, and I'm going to start by painting the base white. So I'm using a bigger paintbrush with this to cover more area and do so quickly. Now you want to make sure that your jar is completely dry if you've washed it out like if it was a jelly jar and a bigger brush will help you go faster. Now the more area you can cover with your brush at once the smoother the coat of paint will be. Otherwise if you're using a smaller brush it'll have more of a distressed vintage look which depending upon your style and if you're giving it as a gift maybe mom's style if mom likes the distressed vintage look that's great um, if not then you might need to do a second coat of the paint okay so with my big brush i'm going to try and make this as close to even as i can and i'm also going to be painting the lid over here where the lid of the jar goes this way when i seal the, the jar lid back on the neck of the jar it'll stick down and it'll stay. You can do that while the paint is still wet. Actually, if you want, you can leave the rim of your jar on and paint it to be the same color as your base if you want it to be all one color. But again, this project, you have to make it the way you want it to look. You want to have a nice vase in your house after you're done with it. Or if you're giving it as a gift, you want it to be something that matches the decor of the person you're giving it to. Okay, so as you can see, I'm going around and making an even coat of white paint. I'm not going too thick with my white paint because I want it to have that distressed vintage look. And notice also I'm not painting the bottom of my jar. This is important because you can do that, but it's going to take a lot longer to dry and you're going to need a place to keep your work surface clean. So I have some newsprint down on my table today to keep my kitchen table nice and not get paint all over it. If you get paint on your hands, it'll wash right off. That's the mark of a true artist, but I don't think I want it on my kitchen table. That's the other reason why I'm holding it like my hand is in a glove. Okay, so that's pretty close to even. And when you're using a big brush, the other good part is it dries pretty quickly. Just slide my hand out, put that down, and then get out a little bit more white paint. I want my coat of paint to be pretty much the same. Now, if you want, you can take either a paper towel or some rubbing alcohol and rub out a section if you want there to be a little window of clear glass. You don't have to paint the whole thing if you don't want to. But if you do want to, well, then go ahead. Oh, I got a little bit of red in here. I think I like that. I put my red paint a little too close to my white, but I think that makes actually a very nice pink sheen. That's the other thing about art, is that you can turn a mistake 
into something fantastic if you're just willing to experiment a little. So here we go. I'm going to make myself a paint jar. Now what I'm doing right now is called dry brush technique in that I'm not wetting my brush in between and I'm trying to get my brush as dried out as possible. Wow, now that looks pretty cool with the red and the white mixed together. It's almost like pink zebra stripes. Now the one thing is if you have it on your can, you do have to turn the can around a little bit. Okay, so there we go. I have, and if you don't like it, you can always wait for it to dry and then paint over it again. The more layers of paint you do on this project, the more opaque and solid the jar will look, your vase will look. Okay, so here we go. That is my first coat of paint. Now I'm going to wash off this brush because I'm done with this brush. Now we're going to be making a flower on this jar, although if you want to do something different, like maybe write mom on it with your paint, uh, you could do that. Now there's two ways that we can make a flower. You can either use a smaller paintbrush like I have here, or a really small paintbrush like this one if you want it to be a tiny flower. We'll come back to those. First, I'm going to be making a thumbprint flower. So if you're a little bit afraid of getting your fingers in paint, this step might not be for you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my thumb, give myself a thumbs up, and I'm going to pour myself, uh oh, looks like it's a little too dry. I'm going to pour myself a little bit of yellow paint to make the inside of my flower. So there's my yellow. I'm going to put it down on my palette over here. I have a wooden palette this jar, which I like better because, than using a disposable palette because it's better for the environment. But anyway, I'm going to take my thumb, give myself a thumbs up, and I'm going to go smush into that yellow paint. Okay, so you can see I have a little bit of yellow paint on my thumb, but I don't have a lot of yellow paint on it. Now I'm going to pick up my jar. Now, at this point, I'm holding it right side up, not upside down. And I'm going to go boop. And I made pretty much a perfect circle just by doing that. Now, you might want to have a napkin or you could dip your finger in a cup of water and then just wipe it off on the side. When we're painting, it's always more fun to get messy anyway, so we might as well enjoy it. So I have my thumbprint center of my flower here. And for the outside of my flower, since I have a pink design going on, I'm going to make it red. So I'm going to take my thumb again, give myself a thumbs up. And as you can see, I have a kitchen sink back here. I'm going to be using this afterwards, but for right now, thumbs up. And I'm going to go boop into the red paint. And again, see now I've given myself some red paint, but not too much red paint. I'm going to pick up my jar right side up again, and I'm going to make my flower petals. Two, three. Oh, I'm going to make that one bigger. So I've got three flower petals so far. Now you should be able to do this most likely with the paint just from that one high five. And you might need to turn around your jar just a little bit. But I find that this is a way to make really nice flowers with even petals. Sometimes when you make a flower and you draw it by hand, one side comes out smaller than the other. Look at that. That is one nice and even flower. Okay, so I'm going to dip my finger back in my water and wipe it off on my newspaper again. This is why my surface is covered in newspaper. And now, if you want to perfect your flower just a little bit, what you can do is you can take your paintbrush and fill in some of the spaces. So that's what I'm going to do right here, to fill in my yellow again in my center. And again, I'm doing this with a dry brush so that it makes a little bit of a speckle effect and the colors blend together neatly without smushing around too much. So the idea is I'm adding more paint and having it mix over the top of the existing paint. Okay, so there we go. I've got a really pretty flower right there. I'm going to wash off that brush. If you need to get up and change your water at any point, please feel free to do so. As you could see, I'm working with a really little water cup here. 
so I might have to get up. But now with my paintbrush, I'm going to paint a stem onto my flower. Down in a kind of a straight line with a little bit of a curve in it, almost like I'm about to make a letter J. And then what I'm going to do, if you want big leaves, you can take your thumb again and use them to make a leaf on the side, which I think I'm going to do. Again, you don't want too much paint on it, just a little bit, and go boop, boop, boop. Okay, so that's a little leaf on the side of my vase over here. Or if you want, you can also very carefully use your paintbrush. So I'm going to give it this tiny leaf on this side, and I'm going to just fix up my thumbprint leaf a little bit over here. Well, maybe I'll make that a little bit bigger. I want it to look proportional to my stem. Okay, and there you have it. This is one flower. You can continue making more flowers like this, or maybe paint some grass along the sides of your vase, like I'm doing right now. I'm using what's left on my brush to give a little bit of a fade towards the bottom of my picture. And we have some grass, and I like that. So I'm going to let that green fade out towards the bottom of my picture. And since my white paint is still a little bit wet, it is lightening. So there we go. I now have a lighter grass and a darker flower stem, which I really like. And I think I'll extend this further, going around the sides of the jar. Now, with this jar, you can paint whatever you'd like. Maybe put a heart on the side or write the name of who you're giving it to. And if you want, you can take the gasket lid and seal it on. But again, you're making this as a gift, so do whatever you think the person you're giving it to would like best. So I hope you had a good time painting with me today, and we'll look forward to seeing you at some of our other programs. Have a great day, everybody!